one of the revolutions in designing problems for students, which I would rather talk about than any technology, is how do you design a problem in the age of the internet? Well, one of the things you do is you change the word solve to involve. If you don't write down any other word in my entire presentation, please write down the Norwegian word for involve instead of solve. Because when you change the word solve to involve, then students have to become problem designers. Changes everything. You know, solve means what's the volume of that cup? That's solve. Well, that you should be able to figure out. But designing a problem, so the first time she did this, she was stunned at what happened. A student puts in a vertical and a radius and uh, gets an ice cube, which is never part of the problem. The kid puts in an ice cube with reasonable numbers and, and the student says, you have three inches left at the top. If you add those three ice cubes, will it overflow? Well, you have to know the physics of buoyancy and the displacement of ice, which is a ratio, then you have to figure out the volume of what's left and subtract that from the total volume and figure out the ratio of the ice. It's too complicated. No geometry teacher in my country would give this problem because we have to cover the curriculum and you can't take time out to solve a really complicated problem that requires thinking. We don't do things like that. I love this, I have to tell you. But, but do not, do not dare to do this. Do not dare. Because I'm going to t be honest with you, she did not know how to solve this problem. She's the teacher. It's much easier just to give kids problems you already know the answer to, because then you know the answer, and you're not going to be in a position where some smart kid in your class comes up with a problem in your subject you can't solve. So don't do this. If you don't want to be in that situation, I promise you it will happen. You're really smart kids here. It's gonna happen. But she loves it. She's changed her mind. Now she thinks the role of a teacher, the relationship, is to teach students how she learns rather than to teach them what she already knows. And teaching children how to learn and how to solve a problem you don't know the answer to can be more powerful than teaching children what you already know because they never saw how you learned it. They just think you're brilliant. You are, but they need to know how you learned it and most teachers never show that in the United States, because they already know. So there's a lot of good things here. One, you're teaching children to think and use their imagination. And two, in an incredible community like It's Learning, you can share this with the other students. Students inspire students. And so this is shown to all the students and the other students see this one and they go, oh wow, I gotta keep thinking. And then they start designing more problems and you have this, this cascade of children inspiring other kids to come up with a design of really interesting application of knowledge. It's amazing, the cascade. Because you know why? Sometimes children inspire children more than a teacher in the United States this thing called peer pressure. Relationships, it's all about relationships. And the relationships that kids have with each other, the, not the relationship the teacher has with the students, but the relationships they have with each other can make a huge difference 